Good morning. Welcome to Headline Focus here live on Core Politics with me, Rob Double. It is Tuesday, the 16th of January 2018. Let's have a look at what's been la- uh, making the political headlines today. So, to start off with, uh, the Labour Party, John Landsman, who's a veteran left winger and creator of Momentum, uh, has won a seat on the Labour's National uh, Executive Committee. Now, this is really important in terms of Labour politics, but also for UK politics, particularly in terms of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership as well. The NEC sets and upholds rules within the Labour Party. Uh, it also prepares different policy documents and puts different policy initiatives forward for the rest of the party to consider, including the Shadow Cabinet. And it also oversees the candidate selection process Uh, as well within the party. So the Corbyn and the left, this is what's been reported as a result of the elections last night, the Corbynite or left wing of the party now have control of all three main areas of the Labour Party itself, one of which is the National Executive Committee, the second of which is the trade union bodies, and the third of which is the Parliamentary Labour Party, which of course is where Jeremy Corbyn has his strong leadership going on uh, at the moment. Now, What's reported today is that John Lansman is expected to use his position on the NEC to push for mandatory reselection of all MEPs. So MEPs will not be, it will not just be assumed MEPs continue to have their seats uh, at every election. They'll have to fight for it um, on every occasion. Now the fear is for moderate MPs now is that that will be used as a tool to get more further left or hard left candidates into safe seats and therefore in the Parliamentary Labour Party as well. So kicking out the moderates and bringing in Uh, more of the hard left. We'll have to wait and see. But obviously what will be really interesting today, and particularly in the next few weeks, is to see what the moderates' reaction is going to be to this. Obviously there's a lot of moderates who might be feeling slightly more uncomfortable today uh, as opposed to yesterday morning. Next story. Now obviously we're going to be looking at Carillion even more. This is a really significant story simply because the amount of jobs which are on the line uh, as a result of the company going down. The good news is though is that the construction, uh, uh, construction and outsourcing giant has a supporter in the government, but the very uh, slightly nuanced support, um, the government is spending, uh, stepping in to support its employees in the public sector. So in other words, it's giving the company a loan of hundreds of millions of pounds to keep the public sector services running, uh, which uh, Carillion has been um, providing to the government. Now, this includes schools, this includes uh, Ministry of Defence services. Uh, there's loads and loads of services peppered amongst all of the departments uh, in Whitehall, which Carillion are the main providers for. The government has insisted this is not a bailout, however. Uh, The Labour Party obviously are saying something slightly different. Uh, Corbyn particularly going on the, um, using this as an example of what happens if you have excessive privatisation and big companies uh, ripping off the government. Uh, Private sector employees remain in complete suspense, however, in Carillion, and they account for 62% of the 20,000 employees. Um, so that's a significant number. And they could also lose out on their pensions, for example. Um, they're hoping, hoping other companies will step in uh, to take their jobs and, and ensure their jobs are maintained. Uh, ministers have a 48-hour window to find these companies to make this happen. Um, Cabinet Office Minister Oliver Dowden insisted yesterday night the government did take contingency measures uh, after Carillion's first profit warning last year. Um, and this is t- particularly over the government's scru- uh, uh, criticism on the government that it continued to use Carillion even though there was profit warnings and there was signs that the company was not going to be stable in the near future. Um, Cabinet Office Minister Oliver Dowden saying that the further eight deals entered into with the firm actually only account for 2% of the ongoing contracts. Really interesting story. There's going to be more lines on this uh, today and probably for the near future as well. One more story then. Now the US Embassy opens today in London. Brand new sparkling shiny glass building uh, on Whitehall, in fact in the Nine Elms area. Uh, that opens for business today without any ceremony, without any uh, you know, pomp and, and, and any presence from, crucially, the President of the United States. Donald Trump has said he will not be attending uh, the visit to open the embassy officially or ceremonially open the, uh, the em- embassy uh, in a few weeks' time. He's saying uh, the that the president has publicly said that the deal in terms of moving the building from where it was in Grosvenor uh, Grosvenor Gardens to uh, Vauxhall was not a good deal. It was sold off cheap and it's not a good location to have the new embassy in and therefore he's not going to come because it was such a bad deal. However, there's an element of where he wasn't really, there was a bit of a cooling of invitations between the UK and the US governments and obviously the protest which might ensue should he arrive. There's also rumour, however, that the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will also not be coming as well uh, in a few weeks' time. So there's going to be absolutely no occasion to mark the US Embassy opening. Theresa May is hoping it's reported to resolve the uh, relationship with the uh, President Donald Trump at the Davos summit 
in just a few weeks' time. Number 10 have yet to confirm, however, that the Prime Minister will be attending, though it seems likely. That's pretty much it for today. You're up to date. Don't forget you can find all the latest on what we're doing here on Core Politics on our Facebook page and Twitter. But for me and all the team here at Core London, have a fantastic start to your Tuesday.